Good evening, everyone, and welcome. You know what? We're really excited to be able to share our presentation on the nine foods to avoid to stay healthy. So this presentation is based on uh, Dr. Uh, Jocker's article, um, but we really want you to have a healing diet that's going to support your optimal wellness. So Dr. Um, Justine is available. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can feel free to text her at 647-987-9355, and she'll be happy to answer all of your questions. So today we have Dr. Justine and Dr. Udani here with us. And Dr. Justine is the um, primary chiropractor and owner of Justine Blaney Wellness Center. She has a multidisciplinary team of natural healthcare workers, and she is a amazing motivational speaker. She um, is an author of her own book, and really she's very passionate about um, healthcare and having an incredible team to help you to your best health. Dr. Danny, who is our naturopathic doctor here at Justine Blaney Wellness Center, is here to share her expertise. Um, and she's really passionate in a lot of areas about women's health and about um, skin conditions, digestive issues, and chronic pain. Um, and also, what we're all under a lot of stress right now. So Dr. Danny genuinely believes everyone has the ability to make healthy, long-lasting changes. Please help me welcome Dr. Justine and Dr. Udani. All right. Hello, everybody. We have some great information coming up today about the nine foods, but we are trying to provide as much information every single week for you. And we have some cool Christmas ones coming up. So first, uh, next week is on EMF exposures. We always talk about detox and toxins. So there's just a lot of confusion about EMF. So that's coming up. The sit and fit for Christmas is about seven to 10 minutes with a warm up. It's very easy, gentle uh, exercises to warm up at the beginning of the day. Um, so it's a great one that you can play over and over with your jingle bells or your jolly tunes um, to just start your day off uh, a little loosened up for the day. The Theraball workout for number one is just body weight. So it is a lot of core workout. It's about 15 minutes long. And the second one is involving with weights. So you need either soup cans or jugs or five, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I chose just to grab 10 pounds and 20 pounds. But in that one at the ending, there's a special ending when you, uh, you see me fall. So hope to join us with these upcoming um, workouts. And we're always trying to put extra stuff for you over the holidays, keep you moving because motion is lubrication for those joints, keep you healthy, keep your heart healthy, keep your core healthy. And as we get into the new year and those new year goals, we will have a weight loss series, a healthy heart series, a diabetes series. So we're trying to get as much information out to you and please share this with friends and family all over the world. I know that it's gotten all the way to Australia. I know that it's gotten all the way out east and all west, um, in Canada, into the US. So these are free. These are our gift from Dr. Udani myself to give back to you. So as we get to these nine foods that we do not want to eat, I know that it's hard to focus on what you can't have because as soon as you say you can't or you shouldn't, then it creates a negative attitude. And then I know for me, once you tell me I can't have something, I kind of want it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, but these are the ones that we want to focus in on table salts, processed meats and hams. I grew up with bologna. I grew up with processed, you know, salami. So um, changing that bacon's in that list too. Artificial sugars. I grew up with Diet Coke, like that, 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 that was better than regular pop. Uh, maybe you did too. Vegetable oil. Certainly that's what I used to bake my cakes as a kid for Christmas cake, Christmas cakes or birthday cakes, microwave popcorn. I know I'm going over that with my kids because you know, it's less calories, but has chemicals inside the bag. Margarine just being plastic. Looking at soy and the challenges with soy, um, challenges with when do you go organic and non-organic and canned foods and the challenges with canned and how we want to have foods by nature or foods by God. So we are going to try and focus on some things that you can eat and some light uh, during this because we know that food provides life. Food provides energy. Food is thy medicine. Food is certainly 
um, the, the, the energy blocks that we need to be our best. So yes, we'll talk about the nine foods to avoid, but we also have some light and positivity coming up as well. So you can either eat to be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or eat to, for it to be a part of poison or toxicity. And our goal today is to avoid those poisons, those toxicities, and to focus on the best gas for your tank. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Justine, for that. And um, hi, everybody, it's good to see you again. So like Dr. Justine mentioned, these are the nine foods that we want to avoid or have as little as much as possible in our diet because we want to, you know, have our food be our medicine instead of it be becoming like a poison and slowly making us unhealthy and you know big, getting all these illnesses. So one of the main ones that we want to stay away from is table salt. And that's because table salt is 90, almost 98% uh, just the sodium chloride, which is the um, what gives you that salty taste. But then the other rest of it is usually composed of, you know, some anti-caking agents. So these are just chemicals that are um, that are there to stop it from clumping. So table salt is so um, too too refined and too uh, purified that it doesn't really have any of those important uh, other trace minerals that we usually get. So down, we're going to talk about another alternative so see we're giving you alternatives so that you can easily change um, your diet to be a little bit more healthy so an alternative to table salt is himalayan pink salt because it is a little less refined it's more uh coming from a more natural source and it contains more magnesium more potassium um than table salt so these are good things to get your heart working these are called electrolytes so we need salt but choose a, a salt that's from a better source like the himalayan pink salt instead of that regular table salt which is can be full of those anti-caking ingredients Another one is one of my favorites, and I'm sure it's one of Dr. Justine's favorites too. It is olive oil. It is so versatile, so amazing, can come with so many different flavors. And you know, there's, if you go to the grocery store, you'll see that there's olive oil and then there's extra virgin olive oil. So what is the difference? So usually extra virgin olive oil tends to be a little bit more on the healthier side because of the way it's extracted uh, compared to the, the olive oil, which can be a mix of extra virgin olive oil and something else. So you, whenever you go to the store, always make sure you choose more of the extra virgin olive oil, the one that says on the label, compared to um, olive oil just by itself. And extra virgin olive oil tends to be have a little bit of a different uh, flavor uh, comp, uh, profile. So it could sometimes can taste a little bit spicy, uh, have a little bit more of that uh, grassy almost flavor. And that's actually the healthy, antioxidants in that olive oil so the way it's extracted is really important too so you got to make sure it's the extra virgin olive oil is what's on the label now if you want to go even a step further you can pick cold press extra virgin olive oil so that is when it's extracted in a cold environment so it's really preserving those antioxidants it's making sure that all of those are safe and in the bottle while you're consuming it and making sure that olive oil, it tends to be a little bit sensitive to, you know, heat, to air, and to light. So always buying the ones in the dark bottle, dark glass bottle, and storing it away from a common light and making sure you use it to, you know, drizzle on salads or using very, very, for very, very light frying is ideal. So going for that extra virgin olive oil, making sure it's in a dark glass bottle and keeping it away from heat and away from air is ideal. Now, coconut oil. So I actually grew up on coconut oil. I, I'm from Sri Lanka. I was born and raised there. So as a child, we would use coconut oil for hair, for our skin, to eat, and it was just all around our, our house. So, I mean, coconut oil has so many amazing, great benefits, and it's really good for if you're on doing trying ketogenic diet as well because it contains these medium-chain triglycerides. So think of them as more of a healthier form of 
uh, fats less inflammatory than the canola oils, the soybean oils, and uh, coconut oil has a really high melting point. So you can really like deep, deep fry foods in that uh, and it won't go bad. And you know, coconut oil can be used for hair, for nails, like I mentioned, and it's just a great oil for helping your, with the gut bacteria as well. And of course, you know, if you're doing a ketogenic diet, it's great to put in that bulletproof coffee just so that you have that extra additional taste and the good source of fats. So another thing that we wanna avoid is GMOs. So GMOs are genetically modified organisms. So these are plants, uh, so vegetables, could be fruits, could be things like you know soybean, uh, that have been genetically modified to be maybe a little bit more withstanding of the pesticides or the resistance to the weather, et cetera, et cetera. So the thing with the GMOs is they're trying to, they're spreading, they're spreading everywhere. You know, they're trying to, these crops are mixing with the natural crops and you're creating, you know, all these different kinds of things that we just don't know what uh, what can happen later in the future because maybe they just haven't done a lot of um, research on it or we just don't know, you know, these are can, can be a completely different um, strain almost. So that's why I always suggest um, making sure that whatever you're eating has that label. It says non-GMO or um, it's been verified by one of those uh, organizations just so that you know you're taking in something that wasn't genetically modified. Now, that being said, um, you eating something that's genetically modified, but it's still a vegetable or fruit um, is better than, still better than eating, you know, something like um, McDonald's. So always having that as you, uh, in the back of your head is uh, great too. Yes, and yes, yeah, so beef. Beef uh, is, can be an amazing source of protein, can be an amazing source of iron. It's great for, you know, energy. But why not go for beef that's grass-fed compared to grain-fed? Because, I mean, like Dr. Justine mentioned before, like I've mentioned before, you are what you ate, ate. So that means what your beef or what your poultry or you know, all these animals that eat, that really matters because that changes the nutritional component of the beef or the meat that you're consuming. So grass-fed beef tends to have more nutrients in them, more minerals, and more of those good uh, anti-inflammatory fats compared to beef that was grain-fed. Because, you know, can you, if, you, if you can even imagine, you know, these, these cattle, right, if you're in that grain-fed, those big farms, they're really curled, very small spaces, they're stressed out compared to grass-fed beef where, they, you know, they're allowed to range freely, they're around to eat whatever they want, and they're just like a little bit more humane as well. So always going for that grass-fed beef can be better compared to a beef that's been corn-fed. So look for that in the label as well. I just want to share a story, Dr. Udani, there with the meat. Uh, yeah. Being a vegetarian, I used to be vegan and then switching to vegetarian, getting my amino acids tested and getting my blood work tested properly with the naturopath, um, I learned that I was pretty low in certain yeah. amino acids and uh, low in B vitamins and B6. So uh, I wasn't getting enough protein, even though I was trying to have protein every day, protein shake, protein and through vegetables, protein, even eating fish um, and eggs, I still wasn't getting enough protein because I wasn't eating beef. So um, definitely super important. If you are a vegetarian, see your naturopath, see Dr. Udani, have a consultation because if you're not getting those minerals, then we need to find a solution to changing that diet or changing that supplements that matches your uh, nutritional goals and your nutritional needs. Um, I, I can't see myself eating an animal again, like eating beef, even though the rest of my family does. I'm the only one. Um, but, and that for me, it's for more emotional reasons after being, uh, you know, um, dared. And then I just haven't changed in the last over 10 years, but it is important to be tested. So highly recommend to everybody, you know, you want to have that grass-fed beef, grass-fed for chicken, animals, like things that are, means animals are allowed to run around. But if you're not eating chicken or beef, make sure you get tested. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Dr. Justine, for mentioning that. That's such an important point because, you know, there is a lot of vegans and vegetarians now in our community, and that is definitely a healthier diet and healthier way to live. But then you, you like you say, you tend to miss out on some of the essential nutrients like the B vitamins and B12, especially that comes from meat sources. So having a consultation is really helpful to know, you know, if you're, if you're lacking in these amino acids and B vitamins and things like that. So that's a great point. And then moving on, so we also want to um, try to avoid popcorn. So like Dr. Justine mentioned, now this is one of my guilty pleasures too. When I have a bowl of popcorn in front of me and there's a movie, I just keep eating. It's just one of those mental things I cannot stop. So <laughs> this, um, that's why I know that, you know, I'm sure all of you are feeling the same way too. You know, now there's a pandemic, so we're just staying indoors more. We're watching more movies. We have in that bowl of popcorn, maybe one or two bowls. So it's really important to know how, what is in these, uh, you know, in these packets. And there's a lot of artificial, there's a lot of synthetic chemicals that are in um, a lot of the most more, more common um, popcorn brands. And, you know, not to mention corn can be difficult for some people to digest, you know, they can have sensitivities into it. So some of the things I always look out for is, you know, things that says, artificial coloring, partially hydrogenated fats or oils, soybean oil. Um, these are just increase that inflammation. And then most of these popcorn is, you know, it's full of pesticides because you know, it's not organic. So making sure you go for the, like an organic uh, option, uh, one that um, is non-GMO and, or just going to Bulk Barn and just getting some popcorn, making them yourself, you know, adding a little bit of grass-fed butter and that could be great as well. So there's some options to, to choose if you are, you know, one of those people that just love popcorn. So we do need to know when to go organic or not. And, really our food is an investment in ourselves it's an investment in our health but it can be challenging when to go organic or not and especially if we're on a budget so i do encourage you to look at the clean 15 or dirty 12 if you have to make a choice things that are have a thicker shell thicker peel like a banana um an avocado you you may choose to not go organic for those but things with no shell no way to uh peel off the pesticides um then you may choose to make sure you're organic and definitely looking at things like an apple to if you didn't choose organic to really wash it carefully and you can look at some of the numbers on the codes to help determine if it was organic conventionally grown or gmo um, to be able to try and make the best choices for your health Ideally, we have to avoid glyphosate. Glyphosate leads to tons of gut issues, um, and then gut issues leads to other health issues. Now, that said, I don't think any of us is perfect, and I certainly don't look at the numbers on every single thing I buy, and I'm not always doing the grocery shopping, and that might be the case for you as well. So none of us are perfect. Nobody eats perfect. Don't beat yourself up that you that you, you know that you can't do a perfect job. But that's when you may want to look at a detox. You may want to look at a detox weekend. You may want to talk to your naturopath about how to um, to to balance it out, right? Like because because we don't have failures. We don't have times where we lapse and have that bad popcorn from a, in the microwave with the bad container and all the chemicals, or we sit on chemicals or we breathe chemicals. So figuring out the detox for you when we do make those mistakes. Um, also Sabine, our natural um, holistic nutritionist does the detox foot baths. Um, my mom loves them. I think they're kind of disgusting personally when you see what comes out and how the water looks gross uh, from a clear water to a disgusting water. But my mom loves the fact to see it coming out of her, like to know that, you know, she's sweating out more toxins. So maybe that's you. And that's sort of the lazy way um, and less expensive way for doing a detox. Um, but if you're looking at doing a really thorough job of a detox, I certainly would talk to Dr. Udani. As we look at the organic versus conventional meats, you can see in this chart that it really affects the minerals that you're getting in your body. So you will see on each line, for example, the snap peas, which we think are you know healthy, they're green, right? But if you look at organic versus uh, conventional, even just in calcium, you can see that there's 
more than two times more calcium if you go organic. Magnesium, which helps your muscles and helps get the achiness out of your muscles, helps your whole body function better. You are literally four times better if you go organic. And I know when we think of cabbage, lettuce, tomato, spinach, right? Spinach, it's green, it's for Popeye, it's for your muscles, right? But then when you look at the difference of organic versus conventional, just in the calcium, again, there's two times more calcium. There's literally five plus times more magnesium. If you look at the iron, look at the iron on the bottom part of the chart with spinach, the one that makes you get your iron and help you get your muscles strong, helps your energy because your iron carries your oxygen in your blood. You'll look at it, it says, 15, 1,584 for iron compared to 19. So if that isn't a reason enough to go for organic spinach, right, to get true benefits, it's it's worth it to pay that little bit extra to get a thousand times more benefit, right? So definitely making sure you look at what's organic and making healthier choices is super important. As we look at those artificial sweeteners, they are the evil. And I know that I grew up with trying to have like low fat, low sugar diet products, diet Coke, diet, you know, juice, diet. It was, seems like it was diet everything, right? And low fat yogurt. Um, but we know that aspartame actually can make you fatter and make you more hungry and make you, um, it can be a poison, in fact, and it affects our brain. So now people relate it to brain conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia. They're now relating it to increased use related to cancer. Certainly, there's a lot of debate uh, about how much risk but we know that it's not healthy. Um, so definitely making sure that we limit, if not totally avoid artificial sugars, sugars and go for the healthier sugars, like your xylitol, like your monk fruit, like your um, uh, unpasteurized honey, pure maple syrup, stevia. There are ways to have treats. Um, and and it, certainly as you avoid sugars, you want them less right? You, you don't crave the sweets as much. And certainly as soon as I start sugars, I want them more, you know, it, it becomes a, a, a real cycle, um, affecting the serotonin in your brain. You just want that like sugar high over and over and over again. So you want those healthier whole food sources, natural sources that have more nutritional value, more health benefits, and they help your gut. Now, if, like my mom, um, and myself in the past, I've been addicted to sugar in the past. Certainly, I know I have. I, and I can see that, you know, you want that ice cream and you want that treat at the end of the day, uh, that feel good feeling uh, because of those sugars. If that's you on that addicted cycle, it's okay. But make an appointment with Dr. Udani. Learn how you can change that cycle with coaching and with help. You do not need to do it alone. Thank you, Dr. Justine. And I agree. I um, I still battle with my sweet tooth. You know, it's an ongoing thing. And that's why I want everybody to know that, you know, you're not alone. Even health professionals like myself and Dr. Justine, we've been through this. We're going through it. And it is um, it is a struggle, especially, you know, in stressful times like this. But there are ways you can limit it. And your taste buds do change. So they do tend to crave less sugar the more you stick to it. And it is something that I would love to help you. And, you know, um, Dr. Justine would love to help you as well. So we are, we're here for you. That's what we want to let you know. Uh, another one is grass-fed butter. So this compared to your regular butter, it just has so much more nutrients because, you know, grass-fed butter comes from grass-fed cows. So, you know, they have obviously they're taking in more minerals, more vitamins. You know, you can see uh, grass-fed butter can contain a lot more vitamin A. So that's a beta carotene. So it's good for your eyes, good for your immune system as well has these uh, amazing uh, things called conjugated linolenic acid, which is a essential fatty acid that our bodies need. Great source of vitamin D, vitamin K2. So vitamin K2 is what you need to get the vitamin, the calcium into your bones. So that's a very important vitamin that a lot of people don't really know about, don't really talk about, but it's really important for bone health. 
and you know contains some really great essential fatty acids and so much more beneficial nutrients so even when Dr. Justine mentioned how much that organic spinach, how much iron it had compared to non-organic conventional, think of how much more health benefits grass-fed butter can have compared to the regular butter. And especially if you like a little bit of butter when you're baking or cooking and things like that, why not switch to grass-fed butter instead of using your regular? And another one is canned goods canned foods canned items so specifically i want to talk about problem with canned tomatoes so a lot of tins are you know you're they're made of aluminum and what happens is when it's exposed to an acidic environment so like tomatoes which are, you know have that sour taste so you know acids tend to be a little bit on the sour side so what happens is when it's been exposed to when aluminum is exposed to this acidic environment for a long period of time, it tends to leach into the food. So that's why I really recommend not, um, you know, not having um, tomato sauce or even pasta sauce in cans and opting into going for using glass. So if you go to the grocery store, buy the ones tomato or pasta sauce that's in the glass bottles instead of the cans because you get less of the heavy metal exposure that you might get because you know the aluminum could be leaching in um, into that tomato sauce or even soups and things like that as well so always um, doing these little changes can really help with uh, reducing that inflammatory burden uh, in your body and another big, big uh, thing is BPA. So I think a couple of years ago, there was a huge controversy where they found uh, BPA in baby bottles. And, you know, BPA has been linked to birth defects, links to increased risk of cancer, and just a whole other bad, bad list of things. And what BPA is, is it makes plastics a little bit more harder, a little bit more resistant, and it also gives it that clear, clear look for the plastic. So BPA was used for so many so many things and then they found that uh, it it can mimic estrogen so it can you know can lead to certain increases in um, estrogen related cancers like breast cancer endometrial cancer for example and then the fact that they found in baby bottles is really worrying so now canada has banned all bpa containing baby bottles for example and you know they're they're in the process of banning bpa in most of the containers that we have so if you look at the label it should say bpa free uh, if it's a plastic container you're using and something else i really recommend is using a stainless steel container for let's see for water bottles glass containers for food because you know especially if you're microwaving things you don't want that plastic to leach into the food so always opting for glass containers or stainless steel containers of uh, glass uh, water bottles is another way to avoid the bpa in our systems with that if you look at the number seven we want to avoid the seven on in the triangle on the bottom bottom of water bottles and we don't want to or or containers that you're using to put food and even if you don't put the food in a plastic container in the microwave you don't want to put hot food into a plastic container to go in the fridge and so that mistake is often made by putting something hot into plastic and that can include we do not put plastic into the dishwasher because then that uh those toxins leach out onto all of your other dishes. Very true, very true. Um, so the good news is it's just three easy steps for a healing diet. We want to reduce our sugars and the grains. Doesn't mean none. You can have, you know, wild or uh, sprouted or whole if you're on the core diet. Um, you can still have the healthier sugars and the berries, the green apples, low glycemic fruits. But we want to reduce that amount. We want to get rid of those bad fats and we want to go to the healthier proteins, the healthier meats that we talked about today, the grass fed. Three steps, guys. But if you're finding it difficult, and many of us do, because it's just hard to change our habits, then get a coach. We always do better if you have an accountability person. And the best accounting person is somebody who's knowledgeable, not somebody who also has a problem with how they eat. For example, many times people will say, well, we'll get together two people who need to eat better or lose weight or make healthier choices, but they both make bad choices on a repetitive basis. They get together to help themselves and to help them as a group. 
better to always hang out with somebody who knows more than you do, who's got it together more than you do, to be supportive. And what is a better person than having someone like Dr. You, Danny, to talk to, to coach you along the way with these three easy steps? If we look at some of the foods that we want to avoid, um, you will see on the next page, this is to help your gut lining and to reduce inflammation. So not everybody is gluten um, sensitive or gluten intolerant or gluten allergy, but sometimes these problems still add up and create glue, like sensation in your gut, sugars, refined carbohydrates, those bad meats, those treats, muffins and cupcakes, um, the things with trans fats, the bacon, um, the, you know, the sandwich meats, um, the condiments, um, the easy fish that you just, you know, throw on a baking sheet into the oven, but it's um, farmed. In order to make these changes, sometimes it's overwhelming, um, even though we know they cause uh, inflammation. So one of the best ways I know when I was trying to lose a lot of weight after having my son was making one change a week, just one change of the week, because at the end of the year, you've made over 50 changes. Take Christmas week off, you know, or your birthday week off. But at the end of the year, you have made 50 changes if you just make one change a week and stick to it. So I know the biggest thing when my son was born and I was 235 pounds at that time, the first change I made was no more Diet Coke. I was addicted to Diet Coke, no more Diet Coke. The second change I made was no more pizza. And that made, that meant that I, you know, when my friends went out to hockey and we had beer and pizza after hockey, I either didn't go because I knew I couldn't say no to pizza or I made sure that I had a, a protein bar or something else to make a healthier choice. So having that alternative swap. If you are finding this difficult, and it is tough at times to just get this, the ball rolling, add a healthy coach with yourself, um, a holistic nutritionist like Sabine or a naturopath like Dr. Udani. There are benefits uh, to healthy fats, right? And But we want to know how to use those healthy fats. For example, ghee or tallow, like that's not something that I grew up with at all, or coconut oil or avocado oil how many of you you know grew up cooking with avocado oil um so learning and getting lessons on how you would add ghee and how you would add avocado oil into your daily diet and how do you get away from canola oil which you know i grew up baking with um and 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 margarine i mean i i know my parents in law grew up with making cookies with margarine so how do you make these swaps find the new recipes and slowly make these changes to be healthier overall um, we want to add the healthy fats from nature food by god food by nature instead of the processed foods and that is making slow swaps each week there are certainly benefits to the healing diet you're going to reduce inflammation if we reduce inflammation you essentially affect all aspects of health Every single disease, every part of healing, we want to reduce inflammation in our diet. And, and in this pandemic, what we've learned is we need to be healthy. We need to be healthy. The healthier you are, the better you can fight off any buck, right? So I, I we were talking to another chiropractor, and he said, the best offense is the greatest defense. So in hockey, you always want to have great defense. That's you Fewer goals against, you're going to have a better chance to win the game. Well, if the best offense is the greatest defense in a health setting, that means protect your temple. Do everything to be healthier from within so you have your armor, you have your ability to fight, you're stronger overall. So we want to reduce the toxic loads, reduce um, our amounts of sugar, stabilize our blood sugar, provide the right nutrients, the right supplements, and have an environment that's not acidic within your body. But how do you know if you're acidic, you don't test it? How do you know if you have the right nutrients and your blood work is proper and your aminos are proper, it, amino acids are proper, if you don't test it? What you don't test, you don't know. So highly recommend at least get a baseline. You get your baseline for your blood pressure, you get a baseline for your cholesterol, get a baseline for your nutrients. And medical doctors just don't do this work. Um, so that you have to see a naturopath if you want to do more advanced 
uh, baseline testing to know if you have a problem or not. If it's great, awesome, go back and do it next year. But if there is a problem, when do you want to know? Do you want to know when it's too late or do you want to know when you can make a change? So thank you for being a part of our day learning about the nine foods to avoid, learning about the choices that you can make changes, the swaps. Thank you to Dr. Jockers and his wonderful articles um, that you can look up. Here are the upcoming wellness talks that we want to include you and share with friends. And as always, please connect with us, share this information with others, do a Google review, do a Facebook review. I know from our hearts, from, you know, as we're coming into the Christmas season, we just want to give. We just want to love you. We want to support you, Dr. Udani, myself, our team. We want to give you the greatest information possible. We want you to be able to share this with friends and family. Now we have, you know, over 50, 70 different videos on our website to give back. And we are committed to do that coming up into 2021. These are tough times, but what we've learned is, the ability to give, to give, to serve, to take care of our temple, that's so important. So please share these videos with others. And when you do a review, that helps others make health decisions too. When you do a positive review, that helps others make healthy um, choices and choose to come into our center. So we thank you in advance for your reviews on Facebook, on Google, on Twitter, on you know, Instagram on, you know, Yelp, whatever works for you. We appreciate you. We thank you. And we hope you have an amazing night. Thank you so much. Have a great night.